What's up, guys? Welcome back to Kind of Funny Games Daily for Tuesday, October 13th, 2020. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by IGN's own Janet Garcia. What's up, y'all? Happy to be here. I am extremely happy to have you on this. I, I personally requested to do the show with you because I have never done a show with you. I'm a big fan of you. I'm a big fan oh, of your thanks. presence on Twitter. If you are not following her, everybody should. What is your Twitter account? My handle is at Game Monisys. That's Game O N Y S U S. And that's actually my handle on literally everything Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, everything. Let's get a little origin story. Where'd it come from? Hmm. Miss Alec. Oh, so you also have Starbucks? Yo, what you order? Good. Hold on. Yeah, uh, Hold on. Trent to Ice, baby. I just go, I go simple. Unsweetened I had to go Trent to Ice. I had to go yeah. basically get the pumpkin cold brew. I'm not really like a pumpkin person, but this this thing hits like you would not believe. Like mm -hmm. Highly recommend. Um, the origin of the the name is essentially from me really liking Greek mythology and then also liking games. So I figured, and I and I like alcohol as well. So I thought like Dionysus, Dionysus, <laughs> what a trifecta. like Game Onesis. And then, but the the only flaw in the name is that when you read it, no one knows how to pronounce it. Yeah. But no one else has had it, which works. So it's like, mm, so it's you know, everywhere. we'll deal with you it. You get first dibs. That's important. Yeah. So Until you're drinking... someone listening realizes and then trolls me on it, but. Yes, you're, you're drinking this uh, this here this strong coffee, and it's because you you before the show you were saying that you were uh, extremely tired because you've been up all night thinking about Kevin's gold stars. Is that correct, or did I only yeah, hear what I wanted to hear from that? That is actually literally what was keeping me busy. It was nothing else. Yeah, I was I was contemplating how I would go about this because on one hand I'm like, okay, well you know I'll just play by ear, award the stars as needed. But since there's a stars cannot be removed policy, I'm like, what if I just inflicted chaos uh -oh. on everything and just ruined the whole thing? I'm not going to do that, but I thought about it and I'm still thinking about it. I probably won't stop thinking about it until hey, we're done with this episode. It, it depends on your experience with Kevin. Have you had to experience, excuse me, have you got to experience <laughs> yeah, why, Kevin? <laughs> Tim, why do you have to be so mean to me? <laughs> I, I took it back. I took it back immediately. It is a privilege yeah, that's, to be able I to believe I have. <laughs> I have had that experience, yes. Yeah? Have that oh, experience. What an honor. Yeah. What an honor. See? That's great, Kev. We can be nice to each other here because this is Kind of Funny Games Daily. Each and every weekday right here on twitch.tv slash games. We get together to talk about all of the video game news that you need to know. You can watch the show live on Twitch. You can watch it later on youtube.com slash games or roosterteeth.com. If you want to listen to it, we're right there as a podcast. Just search your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny Games daily. Please give us the thumbs up, the five stars, the likes, whatever the system is. Just be cool. Um, if you want to support us financially, that's the dopest thing you can do. Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny Games. Uh, just like our Patreon producers, James Davis, at James Davis Makes, the homie, uh, Blackjack, and Tom Bach. Thank you all very, very much. Uh, today's stories include... A whole bunch of cool things. Is Burger King about to reveal the PS5 UI? Huh? Is a Bloodborne modder about to do what PlayStation won't? Is Borderlands 3 next gen a launch game on Xbox Series X and PS5? We're going to talk about all that stuff. But first, a little bit of housekeeping for you. We got a lot of streams. So many streams this week, Janet. You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe it. Uh, we got Second Extinction with Greg and Andy wednesday that's tomorrow at 11 a.m so right after games daily it's going to go straight into them hunting some dinosaurs then on thursday kev i'm real excited for this one uh greg is going to host a untitled goose game co-op stream where joey and kevin are going to play untitled goose game together and i feel so sorry for both of them i'm very excited yeah yeah poor me and joey Greg's yeah. is this going to be a completionist run stream or is this going to be just like trying to roll credits Kev? I, I don't know. I'm very excited. I, I don't know how it all depends on how Joey and I mesh together when it comes to completing tasks in the game, mm -hmm. you know? So we'll see because it might we might have to go full chaos. That's what I'm leaning towards right now. And Tim, you know, Joey's full favorite. Chaos. yeah, yeah, it's right. It's, it's best for the content Tim. you got to think about the content. All right. Mm. Got to think about the gooses. What's good for the goose? Is good for the gander. Uh, I don't know what the hell a gander is. Do you know what a gander is? You can take a gander, like look at something. But it, that's probably not what they meant. It's a group mm. of geese. Is that true? Is it actually? No. <laughs> I made it up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, but do you know <laughs> it's not true? No, I don't know that. See, a gaggle. A, a group of a group of a geese. Group. <laughs> There's a lot of G's being thrown around, Tim Tam. A group of geese People is called a gaggle. <laughs> 
the chat is saying it's a male goose. But that's a weird that phrase. Then. Right. What's good for the goose is good for the male goose. <laughs> I hope not. I don't know. That seems weird. Well, uh, anyways, it, then Friday. It's like happy wife, happy life type. But situation. like, yeah. does, does goose a little dated? Does goose always mean female goose? Yeah. Like, doesn't <laughs> it just mean? Doesn't it just mean like it's like saying human? What's good for the husband is good for the human, or good for the male is good for the human. That sounds very dated. Yeah. These these you know unpolitically correct. Geese, ganders, gooses, gaggles. I don't know. Anyways, whatever. Then Friday, we are doing a Ghost of Tsushima Legend stream with Greg and Blessing at 11.30 a.m. Again, that's after Games Daily. Exciting stuff. Today, we're brought to you by Upstart, DoorDash, and Bespoke Post. But I'll tell you about that later. For now, let's begin with what is and forever will be the Roper Report. Baker's dozen, a gander is in fact a male goose. I'm, I, I don't want to get too willy nilly with this, Janet, but I think Kevin deserves a star for energy alone. I was alone thinking so about far. that. I right? was thinking, you know what? I'm going to award you a gold star for looking up that definition and for Thank also trolling much. us on the original non definition. It was fun, right? So. We, had a, we had a good time. Also, Tim, don't be afraid that you also can throw gold stars at me. Don't be afraid. Unless I'm not afraid. How many do you have? Greg well, it's call. in the. It should be in the chat, right? I believe I'm at counter. nine now. So who will give me my tenth star? It could be either of you. This is very exciting for everyone. <laughs> Wait, how many do you need for the pizza party? Twenty. Twenty-five. Wait, no, I got ten yesterday, right? Because I got the shirt. Is this eleven? Has twelve gold stars. Oh, I'm at stars. eleven. He's at twelve. Okay, I'm at the twelve. Mubot says twelve. Sure, sure, I'll believe the Mubot. <laughs> Mubot's never never steered me wrong before. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. First news story. God, what a weird one. Kev, please uh, bring this up. Burger King's revealing the PS5 user interface. Question mark? This comes from Adam Bankhurst at IGN. An unlikely source, Burger King, is teasing an announcement with PlayStation for October 15th with what very well may be the startup sound for the PlayStation 5. Burger King... God, God, how am I even reading these sentences? I love this industry so much sometimes. Oh, man, the king himself took to Twitter and shared a video featuring the Burger King opening up a big bag that shines a blue light in his mascot face. Mascotty, what a great word. In addition to the light, we hear a sound that was also featured in the PlayStation 5 reveal event with a UI tease and maybe the sound we will hear as we turn on Sony's next-gen console. While this could be a tease for Sneak King 2 for a PS5 and the Burger King revealing the PS5's UI to the world, it's 2020, anything can happen. This is most likely some sort of contest where patrons of Burger King will be able to win a brand new PS5 by purchasing a Whopper or something similar. Taco Bell always does this. They're currently doing it with the, the Series X. The PS5 and PS5 Digital Edition, blah, blah, blah. We don't need to know all that stuff. Janet, what say you? Well, you mentioning that the Taco Bell setup makes me wonder which of the two, of the big two players, has the best random real-life corporate tie-in. So that's the thing that gets complicated because Taco Bell is a lifestyle in a way that Burger King is yeah. not. But Burger that King. That is true has the king and burger king's ties to video games go deep as we all remember from the sneak king back on the xbox 360 do you remember this janet i i try to forget but i do vaguely remember has anyone ever played that game oh yeah y'all should stream that game we should we should i wonder if it's backwards compatible (laughs) uh also anyways real quick it's just a, a psa uh, don't look up Gander and then go to Google Images. You are going to see a lot of geese penis. And it is scarier than Are we it sure sounds. we can't take stars back? We're positive. That's the it's too late. That's the you don't think that's a at, valuable at time, PSA? I would love yeah, was, to not see what a duck penis looks or a goose penis looks like. But now it's too late. I can't unsee it, you know? That is true. That is true. Janet, do you think that this is actually going to reveal the UI? I I'd have I kind of feel like it did because why what else what else would that sound be? I feel like it'd be weirdly misleading to have it be a sound that's completely unassociated with the console, especially because it's not like it's a sound that seems incredibly neutral or is associated with Burger King. So I think it'd be the ultimate troll if it's just like, nope, this is just a random noise that we used for this. Because like if we're thinking of it in terms of it being a sound effect, it doesn't denote the opening of the box or like the sound of like a chest or something. So I feel like this would have to be like the UI and just, I also feel like a uh, Sony just has been so 
playing it close to the chest with revealing information about this. I could see them just sort of being like, oh, this information slipped through and it's not that important or maybe we're not going to actually have like a formal presentation or rollout or blog post on this, especially because like something like the UI or the startup sound that requires some form of video or some form of audio. And I don't really see them doing, um, you know, a stealth drop of a video on their Twitter or anything like that. It just doesn't, doesn't seem like their style. And this seems also too small for them to have like a larger presentation. That seems like that kind of moment already passed. So yeah, if I had to bet, I would say that this is probably that. And I'm excited at that idea because it is just so ridiculous. I love when stuff is just completely bonkers like my gut reaction to this was this timeline is finally starting to turn around like yeah. we've had a rough 2020 mm -hmm. but if this is the start of sound for the ps5 or like the one of the ui noises for the ps5 and this is how we first experience it that that's just like the most video game thing ever in a good way yeah totally i i don't think it's going to be the ui reveal i do think that that's the startup sound but we already like they said in the article we already heard that at the uh the original reveal event so it's weird to me that everyone's jumping to the conclusions of like burger king's gonna reveal the ui i do think it's just going to be announcing a contest because that is in line with what we've seen before from these type of fast food chains and what they do i mean lest we forget the taco bell partnership where they had the taco bell xbox where if you turn it on they replaced the turn on noise with the taco bell gong sound uh tim i have that xbox and i can mm -hmm. say that it is a magical sound can you can you somehow play it for us kev yeah hold on that's what have you ever entered any of these competitions tim no no not in these modern ones back in the day i would have entered them all oh, God. what about you no i have i just i just feel like i'm never gonna end up getting what the thing is i'm also just incredibly lazy with stuff like that like I don't even like returning stuff if I order it; it doesn't fit. That's why I don't like ordering things online. I no, no, we didn't. Take we didn't hear it. Oh, okay, hold on, right. hold on, hold on. I gotta unplug it. I don't respect the Xbox at all, you know. God, Kevin. What? I'm sorry, I don't. I do know people that have won things, like won consoles from that. Like my coworker Armando said he got a Wii U from Burger King, so maybe he's gonna try to run it back and get the PS5. I do imagine that this would be like some type of. Uh, competition or promotional thing but it mm -hmm. is just a weird way to draw attention to ps5 i think it also just speaks to how interested people are in hearing more information about this console like sony has been a lot more quiet than xbox and then also there's just the element of them being the more dominant player in the space based on what the last gen did and what we're expecting next gen to do so i think it's just if anything this, the the hype around this vague tweet teaser from like a mascot just speaks to how much people are like into ps5 stuff and just want to know more and are kind of just desperate for more information yeah totally i i do know like we're lucky enough to have the community of best friends out there that like have updated us many times that there have been many winners of xboxes and i think it was ps4s back when they first came out from taco bell so these contests do work but we'll see. It's not too too many days away. October 15th, my mom's birthday. We'll find out if we're going to see the UI from Burger King. But I, I expect it's still going to come from some type of blog post or, or tweet. Because while I agree with you that Sony style hasn't really been to just tweet out random things, their style has been random updates that seem like there's very little information in them on their blog. And a UI post two, three weeks before the consoles come out. Seems a little bit par for the course for 2020 when it comes to Sony. Wait, I have a quick question. When you guys yeah, say up, UI, guy? like you're talking about the actual like menu system, right? User interface. No, no, yeah, I know what that means. I'm just, just trying to be clear because like the yeah. noise we're hearing is probably the startup. startup sound. Yeah, which I did the talk about like four times. I don't think it's too far away. No, we didn't hear it. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Uh, hey, I appreciate though. I appreciate yeah, the nice. effort, and you know what, Kevin? Wow, that you was wild. <laughs> <laughs> you get the star. You get the star for the attempt. What? And then what? two stars? He, he on did a it. Tuesday? He did it. We That's just what didn't they call hear. you two take Timmy. They call me two take Timmy. Uh, but I do think I need to be a little bit more conservative with my stars going forward. So we'll see. Yeah, don't Speaking cost you of, nothing. Speaking of going pizza forward, you have to pay for later. That's the thing. But then I get pizza somehow. I'll figure this out. Uh, story number two, Spider-Man Miles Morales is Game Informer's cover story. This comes from the boy, Andrew Rayner, at 
Game Informer. Uh, he says, our story runs across 15 pages and offers exclusive details for the opening moments of the game. Miles' powers, the open world, unlockable suits, the new skill tree, and so much more. We spent a day talking to the development team about what makes this sequel different and what players can expect from it both on PlayStation 4 and 5. In addition to our cover story, which hits digital today and mailboxes soon, we will have a full month of Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales coverage online, complete with exclusive video screenshots and developer interviews. Did you get to see the kind of teaser trailer they put up for this? No, but this just reminded me I got to update my, uh, what is it, my GameStop Power Up Plus card so I can get Out my Game player. Informer issue. Like the deep dives that Game Informer does on in these situations are so insightful and wonderful. I remember like reading heavily like their Pokemon coverage and like whenever there's a big game, they always do these like really intensive in depth looks. So um, I, I do get this physical still. So I'm, I'm really looking forward to check out what they have. Absolutely. I saw the tra the trailer earlier. It's on Twitter. Um, Andrew Reyna was posting it. And there's a lot more new footage of Miles Morales. And Janet, I can't wait for this game, man. I I how big of a Spider-Man PS4 fan are you? Oh, I loved it. I, I just thought it was like absolutely wonderful. I do think it falls into this interesting category of being the best basic game. And I don't mean that in to, to be negative, but it's like kind of simplistic and it's um, mission structure, it's side quests, it's collectibles are like very handholdy and like flooded <laughs> but at the same time i i just love doing that like i didn't 100 percent the game because I, I at the time i was like pretty broke so i just red boxed it marathoned it wrote some posts about it and then had to give it back but um i had a great time with it unlocking the suits was super fun i loved how you can mix, mix and match everything i thought it had some of the best bosses in recent game history i think bosses are so hard to get well um like to do well because so often they feel like these weird standardized exam situations where it's not related to any of the class any of like the main gameplay you're doing maybe they throw in a few things it just feels like it sticks out narratively and mechanically but um in spider-man for ps4 it just flowed together so well there are so many things going on with like without you know spoiling things the, the different villains that came into play and the different side characters and yeah, it's pretty wild to think that Miles Morales could be better. Like, it's weird because I, I can't see ways that Spider-Man PS4 could be better. But I think just in terms of the feel of the combat, the idea of them kicking that up a notch is like kind of hard to wrap my head around because it was so good. Yeah, no, I, I absolutely loved it. It's the first platinum I ever got. And uh, I totally agree with what you're saying. I think at the end of the day, the game's fun. Like it's fun to to move in that game to swing around. So even though collecting all the things felt trivial, it was always fun. It was always kind of you know giving you that the momentum to want to to keep going forward because simply moving through the city was a, a rewarding experience. So I one thing earlier at the top of the show I was saying that uh, I love following your Twitter. One of the reasons I love following your Twitter is that you are super blunt and call things like you see them. And I, you do that both positively and negatively, which is, it, it, I'd say, equal fashion, which I think is really great. This being Hispanic Heritage uh, Month and us having you on for Hispanic hispanic heritage week here on kind of funny i've seen your your criticism of uh far cry 6 coming mm -hmm. out with how they're they're handling certain things from what we've seen of miles morales what, what's your take on it from that perspective i'm really looking forward to it i mean i, I think the benefit of it being like in this kind of spider-man universe because it's a spider-man game is there's so much like other lore to consider like i think we've seen especially if we think of into the spider-verse not that they're like taking from that or that I mean, I'm sure they've been developing this game for a long time, but the way like Miles w uh, was portrayed in that and kind of look showing those both sides of his culture of him being both black and also Puerto Rican. Um, I think they like blended that together really well and really seamlessly like they I thought they like mentioned it in a way that felt authentic, but didn't like draw attention to it. I think so often when we have um, especially like Latino characters in games, it's like. I want you to know this character is Latino, so I'm going to make them like randomly say Spanish words or I'm going to make them like say this one thing or I'm going to make them, you know, mention like, I, I don't know, tacos or something. And like, hey, I love tacos. Like, who doesn't love tacos? Right. But it's just it just I feels like exactly like who wouldn't, um, you know, Xbox fans certainly do with the Taco Bell uh, uh, pair up. But like just seeing the trailer, I mean, it's it's very little to go off of, but I think like just even having the integration of like the Puerto Rican flag hanging on the side of the apartment building, I think really subtle but real things like that are so awesome. And I can definitely see them doing that with this game. So um, I'll definitely be looking into and seeing, you know, keeping an eye on like how they do end up pulling it off or ways that they do integrate it. But um, I feel pretty confident that they're going to do this in a way that like feels authentic. Um, I think so often you know, there's different ways to be 
Latino, like we're not all the same, like we're just as diverse as every other group of people would be. And I think it's really cool that they're sort of, I think they're going to end up kind of like showing Miles as who he is just as a person and the ways that like his race do play a role, because obviously that does play a role in who all of us are as our identity, but it's not the end all be all. It's not how we introduce ourselves. It's not like the leading thing. And I think too often they kind of put like the horse before the cart in that they're like, they, they really want to have this representation, but they end up like shining such a harsh light on it that it kind of washes everything else out. Um, and so, yeah, I'm looking forward to what they do with Miles. I think it's going to be good. Hell yeah. Uh, next story, Bloodborne Modder promises to upgrade Bloodborne if Sony won't. This comes from Matt Perslow at IGN. A prolific console game modder has managed to get Bloodborne running at 60 frames per second, but has decided to hold back on making the mod public and will wait to see if Sony upgrades the game for PS5 first. Lance McDonald, perhaps best known for his work with PT, recently shared a video showing Bloodborne running at 60 frames per second. In the comments of the video, he stated his intention to release the mod to the public. Quote, I'll be releasing the, this patch publicly once the PlayStation 5 has released and Sony have made it clear whether or not Bloodborne will be enhanced on that system in any way. Out of respect for PlayStation, I want them to have the first chance to put 60 frames per second Bloodborne into the hands of players. Should Sony's boost mode for PS5 not bring Bloodborne up to 60 frames per second, then McDonald will release the mod for players to use. It should be noted, though, that PS4s are not simple simple to apply mods to like PCs are, so it will require some technical know-how to use. The standard debug menu for Bloodborne can double the frame rate, but this also doubles the gameplay speed. McDonald had to study the PS4 Pro update for Dark Souls 3, which uses the same engine as Bloodborne to work out how to hack and modify the game. People are so freaking cool. Like, yeah, really impressive. So here's another quote from him. A vast array of features such as cloth physics, particle and special effects, environmental wind, animal patrol pathing, motion blur sampling rate, and elevator movement speed all require manual patching. Uh, th this way, gameplay logic is correctly adjusted based on the amount of time that has passed between each frame rather than being locked to a fixed timestamp. Sony has revealed that almost every PS4 game will be playable on PS5 thanks to backwards compatibility, with some enhanced by a boost mode. It's not clear, however, if boost mode enhancements are tailored to the specific games by Sony or the developer, like many Xbox backwards compatibility projects, or if boot mode, boost mode is an automatic process. Without any developer input, it seems like Bloodborne may need McDonald's patch to hit that gold in 60 frames per second. What do you think? It's just like wild to me that someone could like, like not only that they have the gall to do it, but also the know how to just be like, you know what, if they don't do it, I'm just going to do it like for the culture. Like, I think that's pretty uh, wild in itself. And, I, you know, I think this speaks to the, the, the passion that's behind the Bloodborne community. I'm not a Bloodborne person. I did play, um, you know, a good a good 16 sad minutes of it. Uh, I think I like <laughs> bought it on a whim. I'm not kidding. I bought it on a whim when I was sort of getting back into not, I guess getting back into gaming, but sort of having like a little bit of a resurgence. I bought my PS4 super late because um, I just, it took me a while to get into this gen and then, you know, yada, yada. I, I got my first job. I spent like way too much money on like getting a PS4, getting another controller. I got No Man's Sky. I got Bloodborne. I got like one other game. And then I was like, why did I buy Bloodborne? This game is like hard as hell. Like I didn't really know like a lot about like Souls Likes and like that kind of genre that, or that style or that series. I just kind of, I asked my friends like, what should I get? And one of them told me Bloodborne because they're not they're not a true friend. So they don't they really don't know me very well. Um, I'm like, why did you think I could play this? They're like, oh yeah, it's really hard. It's like th that and the people who told me to get the Mega Man collection. Like, why did you want to hurt me? I don't understand. <laughs> What's wrong um, with these people? <laughs> it's too hard um and not in like a in a way that i find enjoyable um personally but yeah i just i think this is like pretty wild um i am it does call into question like when are we gonna know more about what games are in boost mode is this gonna be like i really don't want to spend this year asking about boost mode for every game also i really hate that it's called boost mode it's a very like drake vibe terminology it's weird. to it's, me I, I, I don't know yeah that's that's hilarious yeah but, but it, it's the also name... smart delivery so it's this gen's just a mess with terminology those words that are just ridiculous but yeah i'm most interested from the story on exactly how all this is going to function and and me and greg have been talking a lot about the backwards compatibility side of both the xbox and the playstation and you know xbox has kind of been able to be a bit more straight up about things i mean i guess playstation could have as well but xbox has been i think a lot of that has been because they've already been doing it with the xbox one x 
and having the Enhance for X program. And they've been really focusing on building out their backwards compatible library and enhancing those and boosting those for the last generation, that this is kind of just continuing that trend. So when the Series X comes out, we're just going to kind of, we already know what to expect because we've already seen how it works with their games. Whereas with PlayStation, it's a little harder to kind of kind of look at. Like with PS4 Pro, we know that like games run a little bit better, but that's usually on a you have to go in and change a setting, right? With, with either performance mode or uh, resolution mode or whatever. Uh, with this though, I'm interested in this guy who really seems to know what he's talking about, talking about having to go in and look at the cloth physics, look at the different effects and and environmental wind, things like that, because those little details are what make or break a game like bloodborne and you need to get it right it can't just be this like one size fits all boost mode just makes games better because it's going to introduce a whole bunch of different glitches and a whole bunch of different things into a bunch of games and that's what i think the rest of the year is going to look like uh if not even longer than that is sony's not just going to come out with a list of games and be like here's the games that are enhanced it's going to be the ps5 comes out and everyone's going to try the one game that they're interested in or one or more games that they're interested in checking out and then we're going to see a ton of posts on kotaku of oh man this game sure has a lot of weird bugs when in boost mode and that's going to continue for months to come until people stop caring <laughs> and either things are fixed or people just come to terms with the fact that this is a very complicated process but i do think 60 frames per second bloodborne is something that sony clearly knows is a desire from the community so it would be huge if they could hit it and i don't necessarily expect that they won't i mean why not just put these energies though into like the next bloodborne game like do you think that we're just not going to get bloodborne 2 like is that not going to be a thing because i feel like that's it's funny because I'm thinking about this person like doing all this mod work and imagine like getting it all ready and then <laughs> like have it ready and then like Bloodborne 2 is like announced or something like that. Um, I'm sure I wouldn't stop you from playing Bloodborne over and over again. Like Bloodborne is also just one of those games that like the people who like you either don't like it at all, whether it's because you don't really like that genre or like, I don't know, some people do have like qualms on the speed of it. Like some people like a different kind of uh, a flow for these type of games, but you either don't like this game at all or you like live it. There's like not really an in-between. Like no one's casually playing Bloodborne. Yeah. Like no these people are going right. back. Yeah, no, no <laughs> one's like, oh, I beat it, but like whatever. After I beat it, I was done. They're like, I beat it. And then I went back and then I fought like some spider or some stuff. I don't know. These are just like <laughs> the random pieces I've gotten from being on Beyond um, from you know the people there that love Bloodborne. But yeah, like it's a it's something that like I think would be heavily scrutinized if it w were to be done because the players that have spent time with that game haven't just spent time. They like live it. They live the Bloodborne. So it's yeah, like totally. you, you really got to get something like that right. Uh, see, I think that there definitely is going to be a Bloodborne 2 at some point. I'm actually a little bit shocked that we haven't seen it uh, already. But I also think that From's been doing so many different projects uh, that I, I'm i also I'm not too surprised that they're, they're taking their time because they know that they can wait and just have it be a PS5 game and not have to worry about PS4 at some point, uh, which will definitely benefit that game. But I do think that it would be worth the effort to go in and figure out uh, the original Bloodborne, specifically because it's part of the PS Plus collection. Yeah, that they that's have. a great so point. So it's like there's going to be a lot of people playing this game for the first time uh, on the PS5. And with this next generation kind of being so about this you know high refresh rate and fast loading speeds and all that you kind of would want to show off your like gem titles in the best way possible and like showing the power of the ps5 but we won't have to wait too long to find out uh next story borderlands next gen launch date and details this comes from borderlands.com when the next gen consoles arrive in just a few short weeks the award-winning mayhem of borderlands 3 will be there on day one uh, we're proud to confirm that next-gen Borderlands 3 will be available day and date alongside the new consoles, playable at launch on the Xbox Series X and Series S on November 10th, and the PlayStation 5 on November 12th. Uh, existing owners of Borderlands 3 on current-gen platforms can easily transition to the next-gen versions within the same console family. If you own Borderlands 3 on Xbox One, you'll be able to play the Series X and S version. If you own the PS4 one, you get the PS5 version. Please note that if you own a physical disc of Borderlands 3, you will need the Xbox Series X or standard PlayStation 5 console models that include a disk drive to take advantage of this feature your add-on content and save files can be ported to next-gen consoles within the same family so you can jump straight back into the action i'm you know, sure greg miller's stoked i didn't even think about the fact that 
someone being in that situation where it's like you had it physical, but then you're going digital and now you're like, like sort of weirdly penalized for having like made that jump. But like, that's a, a really odd situation for, for people to be in. Uh, are you a Borderlands fan? Are you like still playing? Like, are you still running in there? No, running, no. gunning, getting but the loot? Greg Miller very, very much is. So I'm sure he's stoked about this. And I, I think this is just good news. Like, this is how things should be. I, I want to see a lot of current gen titles just day and date with the next gen. Hey, the next gen version's here. And you can just play it. If you have the other ones, you're getting the update. Like, that is such a beautiful thing to be able to move into this next gen and not lose the games that you're you're playing. Because there's a ton of, people out there still playing borderlands 3 so this is like great awesome news for them and like i I love that they're seemingly making it as easy as possible for as many people as possible to continue enjoying the game obviously there's going to be some weird caveats with the the disc stuff but that's just logistics yeah on that note when next gen comes out are you planning on and i don't know what your like home setup is but are you planning on just like yeeting your ps4 into a drawer or are you gonna like keep it yeah so i think uh, to, I think a lot of people are going to do that where it's like, okay, it's it's time for the new thing. And you like throw the PS4 off of your desk lovingly and you put that like weird white tower next to like whatever mm-hmm. other crap you have. <laughs> My boyfriend's in the background nodding because he's a huge PlayStation fan. Um, and he's also planning on doing that. He's actually been preparing. Like he's like, I'm going to knock out my PS4 backlog because after this, I'm just going <laughs> to, awesome. after this, I'm just going to, you know, like not revisit it again. Um, so yeah, I think that's that stuff like this is cool because then you can just like you don't have to feel like you're tethered to your old devices. Um, it's such a it's such a hard thing to like go back and like set all that up. I know that makes me sound super lazy, but I think a lot of people can relate to that. That's why oh, like I, I like I have my Wii U and there's so many great games on there that I'd like to play, but it's like now nah, I gotta plug in the Wii U and like totally we're bringing I, up old old wounds. Like I don't yeah. I don't know oh, it's too much the gamepad. Oh my god, I don't want to have to touch that thing again. But it's shockingly comfortable. Was it not I, shockingly comfortable? Here's my th- Janet. I love you. You're the only person I have ever heard that <laughs> is saying that because I loved playing with the gamepad. I, right? In terms of as a controller, I hated using the actual screen and I hated like that the uh like look of it looking like a Fisher Price toy. But oh yeah. I play Mario 3D World on that thing. I was like, this is actually kind of nice. I like having my hands this also, far apart. I don't know. How nice was it? And may- maybe maybe you don't go this far, but how nice was it to have like the map on that? Like there were certain things that were it was nice Little having thing. a dual screen for. Like yeah. going on there and looking at the map. It was just nice. Like it's the best it's the best way to play Wind Waker. Like oh. That's just absolutely, facts. absolutely. Now, so that's you bring up an interesting thing that I've been talking about a lot here on all the different shows. But like, I am so excited for this gen because it's the first time in a very long time that I'll be able to, without worrying at all, get rid of this current gen and just move on to the next. And it, that's something that we weren't able to do moving from PS3 to PS4. There was such a long time period where it was like I had to have both set up. And when you start adding all those things up, there's a lot of consoles, a lot of wires, a lot of HDMI cables and stuff. And it's like it just gets kind of annoying. On top of that, especially with Sony's stance on hardware and controllers, yep. a ton of different controllers. And so not only do you have to have a PS3 controller, PS4 controller, or now eventually you know PS4, PS5, if you were to have to do that, it's the different type of charging cables for the controllers and And all of that, right? I love that we are finally getting to a point with the Wii U that the games are on Switch. Like, essentially everything is, or in the next year, will be on Switch. And I don't ever need to worry about taking my Wii U out again, right? Like, that's such a nice... But you just have to buy all the games again, which is pretty... (laughs) It's funny, because, like, Nintendo really does just play its own game. And I love Nintendo. I'm a huge Nintendo fan. They're actually my favorite of the three, even though they are the messiest of the three by a lot. They get away with murder. Um, And I don't mind. I'm like, stab me in the heart. I love Mario. (laughs) Um, That's fine. (laughs) I'll play Mario in heaven or hell. It's all good. Um, But, yeah, like, being able to just, like, seamlessly train like these are things that like i wouldn't even dare to dream of as a nintendo fan like seamlessly transferring your saves over just like yeah it's it's pretty wild but um yeah i'm really glad that they're doing stuff like this um hopefully we see more of it uh and even though i am kind of frustrated about the controller thing in the sense that now i definitely need to buy extra stuff like with both xbox and playstation i'm excited to have like just all new stuff, like new mm-hmm. controllers, like playing some new games. Like I, I'm just really looking forward to this gen. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, yeah, me too. Um, next new story, sticking with some Xbox stuff here. Halo 5 is not coming to the Master Chief Collection. This comes from Eddie at GameSpot. 
Halo the Master Chief Collection is the most complete Halo package ever released, but it doesn't have every one of Master Chief's journeys included in it. Halo 5 is the only mainline game missing from the collection, and it's going to stay that way. Developer 343 Industries reaffirmed in a blog post that Halo 5 is not currently planned to be added to the Master Chief Collection. The wording suggests this is not a set-in-stone declaration, but for now, it seems quite unlikely that Halo 5 will join. As it stands, Halo 4 will be the final game added to the collection on PC. The Xbox One edition has included Halo 4 since release in 2014 uh the quote is halo 4 is the last halo title we currently have planned for the collection sorry to crush your halo 5 and mcc dreams so let's finish strong uh, it, it's interesting you know over time we we got the additions of odst and reach um i am a little bit bummed about this because i think that halo master chief collection is such a fantastic game in 2020 <laughs> it, it took a long time for it to kind of like iron out a lot of the issues but i like halo master chief collection is kind of a legacy platform for halo especially as we're moving into infinite and you know having the playlist when you play online of being able to jump between the different games and play styles is something i think is really appreciated by the fans and this isn't the worst because if you have game pass you have halo 5 and you have Halo Master Chief Collection. So it's not like you don't get to play the games. I just think there's something about the seamless connection between having them all together and the way that the games and campaigns and multiplayer suites work together is, is a very, very cool thing. I think, though, like having it separate is sort of like further emphasizing the idea of, hey, this is something new and maybe like... It's it's weird because Halo 5 is kind of meant to be both a departure and a return, which we'll see how that works out. But where it's like sort of trying to be. You're talking about rehab Infinite. Oh, sorry. Yeah, Infinite. Um, where it's like, yeah, so that's what I meant about Infinite. But I think it's just kind of like we see a lot of situations in these uh, collections where there is like these outlier games that just don't make it on there. I mean, we saw this with even like, you know, bringing it back to Nintendo, like Super Mario Ugh. 3D All-Stars. People were like, where's Galaxy 2? Where the and hell's Galaxy 2? That's definitely weirder. This isn't the same because like Master Chief Collection has already like been a thing for like a while. Um, it, it kind of reminds me of that where every now and then there are just these games that just sort of like float in the ether because if not, like the only other option is to just continuously roll them into these bundles. Um, so yeah, you know, I get it. And I feel like it doesn't really make too much of a difference. Like you said, like if you have Game Pass, you're still getting all that stuff. And I always think of like for me personally, um, and like I'm not like a Halo like player or fan by any means i did play the first one through the master chief collection with a friend who like he had played it like a million times over um and i had a fun time with it granted i i was able to just kind of like follow along and like shoot the things we also put on the thing with the where you get the grunt birthday party where oh, you get yeah. the headshots and the confetti comes out that's like one of the best things it's real in good. any game in any game like so fun. I, everyone just do that somehow um so yeah i did have fun playing that talking to my friend over you know chat and stuff so, but to me, like Master Chief Collection is a little bit more of that, like, you know, kind of opening the historic vault to things. Um, and I understand the idea of like not having everything like funneled in there. Yeah. Looking at the the chat, like two really good points are Halo 5 is not available on PC. So getting into the Master Chief Collection would be nice on, on that side. And also this segments the player base between Master Chief Collection and Halo 5 in terms of online players which which yeah all that stuff is is kind of a bummer uh we recently did do greg miller's first ever playthrough of halo combat evolved uh and we did a whole series on youtube.com slash kind of funny games where andy and i who have played a million times uh played with him and it did not go well he hated really it. hated it it, it, it might have been just because i have to watch all the videos to find oh, out. Just, oh it's, it, hey the videos are fun because it is just us hanging out but uh yeah it's just there's something about the old game is old mentality was it, was it the floatiness of like the little vehicle you get in because that thing does not control well the, the warthog i mean that's the thing is like we me and andy have nostalgia for that like we 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 love the way it controls because it's like we just we, we remember it <laughs> you know it's part of the charm whereas grace is like nah <laughs> like every, all the moments that we remember being like oh man then you go on the beach and there's like a million enemies and it's the most epic thing ever and then we play it it's like there's like five dudes <laughs> just like this giant empty beach it's just like yeah i swear it was cool it was i promise you but anyways uh sticking with some good microsoft news here microsoft is giving away cloud saves for xbox 360 users in effort to get them to upgrade uh, this comes from mike fahey at kotaku as Microsoft gears up for the release of the fourth generation of Xbox game consoles. Wow, hold on. Just stopping there for a second. Fourth generation Xbox. That's like, 
really crazy to think about because I remember when Xbox wasn't part of the console wars and then all of a sudden they came in and to think that we're at the fifth PlayStation and the fourth Xbox life's weird man life's weird uh it throws a bone to the likely few and probably quite proud gamers who've stood by the second generation for 15 years xbox 360 users will soon be getting free cloud saves to make upgrading to xbox series x and s easier uh hooray for those couple of people (laughs) normally restricted to xbox live gold subscribers on the 360 microsoft is throwing the doors wide in the lead up to the xbox x and s launch allowing save data to flow freely from the 360 to the cloud regardless of xbox live subscription status the news comes as one item in a list of backwards compatibility features posted this morning on xbox wire which also covers things like making fallout 4 run at 60 frames per second and auto hdr for games developed before hdr visuals were a thing yeah, again i think this is an, another example of like microsoft just being like nice totally like, it's awesome. just like doing something cool though also like can we just keep the same energy for the rest of time because i think it's really annoying that you need us like some form of subscription to have the save data part like i get it for online but mm-hmm. i'm like why can't my why do you need it for my save data or like i just wish there was something else for it because actually i i rarely play games online at all um oddly enough i think the game the online game i play the most is probably like splatoon 2 or something because that's (laughs) the only way to like i mean you can play that single player and i I beat the campaign but like that's essentially it um which is funny because nintendo has the worst online service of of all three um but like i i just see i'm getting flashbacks to when i was burned like eight eight times with my last of a save trying to play last of us for the first time for like the last six years which i finally finished this year um Congrats. because i didn't my my save did, like i never remembered if i had like the thing mm-hmm. and like I, I always played on like these different consoles i kept having to replay it i replayed the first two hours of that game i swear at least six times um so this is really cool for people who you know like i think it just kind of shows some love to longtime fans and i think it's one of those situations where Microsoft feels like this isn't really losing them necessarily money. Like they probably weren't going to get, well, they weren't going to get those people anyway. Like they've mm-hmm. already held out this long. So it's just sort of like, hey, let me do this. This is like low cost to me. But what it does provide is stuff like this, right? We're talking about it. It's yep. like a positive thing. There's not really any way to spin this negatively. So yeah, I mean, I love the stuff that Microsoft is doing, like in terms of how they treat players. And on top of that, like, we're, we just spent however long talking about will Bloodborne be 60 frames per second? Here it is. Like, Xbox is just already doing this stuff. This auto HDR stuff, I'm sure, is going to cause problems. But it's cool that they're trying. They're attempting. Like, Jeff Keighley recently posted the video of him playing Blinks the Time Cat on uh, his no Series play. X in, like, 4K with, like, Dolby and all that stuff. And I'm like, that's great. I love that stuff. Like, I love that Xbox has just somehow built their entire lineage to be able to be upgraded that way and it's like making old games look new again or or kind of like just get that upgrade straight out the gate awesome stuff uh but man seeing if playstation is going to be as good about xbox uh, as good about backwards compatibility as xbox is is so far away janet if i wanted to know what was coming to mom and grop shops today where would i look you can check out the official list of upcoming software across each and every platform as listed by the Kind of Funny Games Daily Show hosts each and every weekday. The hard pause. <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Kevin. Thank you for the slightly delayed and then it's played song. I like that. that. It I added ha- a little I bit of to, tension. If I don't wait it out the the correct amount of time, then mm-hmm. it, it then it, it cuts w- us off. Yeah, or yeah, exactly. So you just got to balance it out. It. Mm-hmm. It's great. Uh, we're gonna have to wait just a little bit longer to get to the games coming out today because I want to tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by. DoorDash. Between never-ending laundry cycles and incoming emails, you've got plenty on your to-do list. Give yourself one less thing to worry about and let DoorDash take care of your next meal. If you want Chinese, they want pizza, someone's craving Froyo, there's something for everyone on DoorDash. Continue supporting restaurants in your community safely. There are thousands of restaurants open for delivery on DoorDash that need your patronage now more than ever. Uh, Just yesterday, I got one of my favorite burritos in the world, Gordo, delivered to me. And oh man, it was good. 
Thank you, DoorDash. Uh, you've counted on restaurants. Now they're counting on you. And while their dining rooms may be closed, they're still open for delivery with DoorDash. DoorDash is the app that brings you food you're craving right now, right to your door. It's super easy to order. It's super easy to use the app. With over 300,000 partners in the U.S., Puerto Rico, Canada, and Australia, you can support your local go-tos or choose from your favorite national restaurants like Chipotle, Wendy's, and the Cheesecake Factory. And who doesn't love the Cheesecake Factory? Right now, you guys can get $5 off and zero delivery fees on their on your first order of $15 or more when you download the DoorDash app and enter code GAMES. That's $5 off your and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code GAMES. Don't forget, that's code GAMES for $5 off your first order with DoorDash. There you go. Also, shout out to Bespoke Post. This fall, as you get back into the swing of things, Bespoke Post has brand new seasonal box of awesome collections for guys, guaranteed to upgrade your life. Uh, Kevin recently got the, the light collection, so we got the Hue lights for his bathroom. So did Joey. Blessing got some sweet shoes. It, there's a whole bunch of cool stuff here. Whether it's gear to upgrade your autumn craft beers or cozy threads for when the temperature dips, Bespoke Post only sends you the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, uh, cooking tools, and outdoor gear. To get started, you just take the quiz at boxofawesome.com. Your answers will help them pick the right Box of Awesome for you. They release new boxes every month. Each box costs only $45 but has over $70 worth of gear inside. You can get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter code GAMES at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com code GAMES for 20% off your first box. And finally, shout out to Upstart. During these economically turbulent times, everyone's looking for a way to feel more financially secure. If you're still needlessly throwing money every month at high interest credit card debt, it's time you checked out Upstart, the revolutionary online lending platform that knows that you're more than just a credit score. Now is the time to find out how low your Upstart rate can be to help pay off your high interest credit card debt. Unlike other lenders, Upstart can reward you based on your education and job history in the form of a smarter rate. You don't need a degree or diploma to apply though. Uh, one of my really good friends had a lot of debt issues used Upstart, consolidated it all into one monthly payment, just made it a lot easier to wrap his head around, and now he's looking A-OK. -okay. Upstart makes it fast and simple to check your rate. There's no affecting your credit score because it's just a soft pull. Uh, you can see why Upstart has a 4.9 out of 5 rating on Trustpilot and hurry to upstart.com slash KF games to find out how low your upstart rate can be. Checking your rate only takes a few minutes. That's upstart.com slash KF games. Your loan amount will be determined based on your credit income and certain other information provided in your loan application. Not all applicants will qualify for the full amount. Once again, go to upstart.com slash KF games. Oh, whoops. Uh, Buffalo blast. From Kevin. <laughs> My bad there. <laughs> Oh, whoops. <laughs> From the Cheesecake Factory. I haven't missed those really badly. <laughs> I love you so much. Out today, you we have Red Wing Stars. <sighs> don't be that guy. Yeah, don't try that hard, Kev. Hey, don't try. Hey, 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 hey. You don't have a pizza party on the line, all right? You don't know what I'm going through. <laughs> Out today, we got Red Wings Aces of the Sky on PS4, Xbox One, Switch, and PC. We got Robotics Notes Dash on PS4, Switch, and PC. We have Robotics Notes Elite on PS4, Switch, and PC. God, this list gets weirder and weirder every day. We have Remothered Broken Porcelain on PS4, Xbox, Switch, PC. G.I. Joe Operation Blackout on everything. Printy 1 and 2 Exploded and Reloaded on Switch. Torchlight 3 on PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Foregone on Xbox One. Second Extinction on PC, which Andy and Greg are going to stream tomorrow. Werewolf the Apocalypse Heart of the Forest on PC. That sounds like Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Uh, Night Vision Drive Forever on PC. Biomass on PC. Venture Valley on PC and Mac. Zombie Hills on PC. PC and Mac. Dung Beetle Strike. <laughs> what? <laughs> on PC. Firewall Zero Hours six, Sixth Season lands on PSVR today with a new map. Uh, Red Dead Online introduces the elusive and imposing legendary Ruddy Moose for studying and hunting this week. Uh, Steven Wright at GameSpot talks about the Among Us patch. Though there aren't official patch notes as of yet, Among Us players have put together a decidedly unofficial list of new features on the game's subreddit. These include shifting the wires task to make more accessible for colorblind players by making each wire have its own shape rather than just a color to differentiate them. However, it also gives game hosts more options to transform the game experience, including the ability to make voting anonymous as well as making the taskbar appear only at certain times. Both of these changes theoretically make it easier for imposters to skate by without being detected, but it's up to the server creator to determine whether or not to use them. 
cool stuff. More accessibility things are always good in these games. Sure. Uh, more new dates for you. The Deep End Games announced. Oh Lord, Janet, can you help me out here? Romancelvania, Bachelor's Curse, featuring Dracula as a reality dating show star. This is so good. Mm-hmm. Coming to PC, PS4, PS5, and Switch in 2020 with custom physical editions by Limited Run Games. Shots Limited Run Games. Uh, Romancevania Bachelor's Curse is a thirsty action RPG that puts players in the shoes of Dracula who must journey across Transylvania seeking the world's most notorious monsters to convince them to join his reality dating show, Slay and Lay. Everything about that was very enjoyable to read. It is, we also it have, is. Uh, Two Point Hospital. Culture Shock comes to Steam on October 20th. The new volcanic mountain of Elja... El... Elja... Eljaf, Eljaf, E L D J A L L. That is a lot of letters next to each other. Coming to Lonely Mountains Downhill DLC on October 22nd, and October Night Games launches October 28th on Steam. Wow, there you go. And uh, an important note for everybody: speaking of this Romancelvania Bachelor's Curse, the most important out today, the Bachelorette is back. Ladies and gentlemen, I could not be more excited tonight. It premieres on ABC. Let's go. Will Claire finally find love? We'll have to wait and find out. Uh, Anyways, some deals of the day for you. It's Amazon Prime Day. Microsoft, Walmart, and more have their own competing day as well. Uh, So go check out. There's a ton of deals, including you can get the entire Fast and Furious saga in 4K for just $45. Join the family, everybody. Uh, Xbox Game Pass updates. Age of Empires 3 Definitive Edition on PC is coming October 15th. Heave Ho coming to P- or to Xbox October 15th. Katana, or not coming to. These are, well, yeah, 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 yeah. Sorry, these are coming to Game Pass. Uh, Katana Zero. Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition. The Swords of Ditto. Momos, Mormos, Curse. Scourge Bringer, Cricket 19, and Superland. Uh, all between October 15th and October 22nd over there on the Game Pass. Let's do a little bit of reader mail, Janet. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds good. You can go to patreon.com slash games to write in your questions, just like Justin B. did. The September Player's Choice poll on the PlayStation blog has been claimed by Genshin Impact beating beating Avengers, Tony Hawk 1 and 2, Spellbreak, etc., all while only being out for two days in September. This game seems to have come out of nowhere, but has had huge success. I was wondering if we should be cautious with this type of game, though. The mobile-style monetization mixed with actual open-world RPG gameplay could be exploited by other publishers to force more reliance on the gotcha. Many people, myself included, haven't spent a dime and can still play the game normally, unlike a lot of mobile games with similar systems. Do you foresee clones of this from the big publishers after seeing MiHoYo has recouped costs in under two weeks? I'd imagine so. I think everyone yeah. is always looking, even when they don't admit it, or maybe especially when they don't admit it, everyone's aware of what everyone else is doing. Everyone's looking, they're thinking, they're taking notes, they're writing it down. Maybe they won't do anything, but it's something to think about. You know, like we're we're all always like monitoring what's going on in whatever industry we're in to see like who's doing what, how can we incorporate that? What do we want to do differently? Like it's, I think those gears are constantly turning. And yeah, I think the success, like it seems like it could be a viable financial strategy for people. Uh, whether or not we should be cautious, I think that's kind of a, a weird way to look at it. I do understand the um, pushback against uh, microtransaction style monetization in games. And it's not necessarily something that like I'm advocating to see more of. I don't really know anyone that necessarily likes that model. It's more like, oh, I like this game and it happens to have that model and I'm okay with it, is essentially where most players tend to land. But I think the idea of, um, oh, this one game or the style of game is going to unravel the industry and cause like all the, you know, like now everything's going to be like that. I think we always, or we often tend to catastrophize in these situations. Even if we see several games that follow the monetization structure of Genshin impact, I don't think that's speaking to like a larger new wave in the community. I think, I think it would be very like, I think it's, I think we're really far away from seeing like a very major franchise take this kind of thing with like a mainline game like i don't think we really need to worry about that idea so much so to me i just see this as a new well it's not really new because like you know this kind of monetization has been around forever and this is certainly not a new style of game but if you're thinking of like the genshin likes that appear i think that'll be maybe a little bit of a wave and that's fine like it can have its time it does its thing i haven't played it personally but a lot of people seem to like it i I essentially hear nothing but good things about this game so yeah i mean i think i think it's fun yeah uh, Janet, I wish I could give you a gold star for the use of the word catastrophize. Ooh. That was that was awesome. 
So you know what? Fuck, I'm going to start defrosting the pizza now. <laughs> uh, it's time to squad up. Again, you can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games to squad up with the best friends out there, just like Jordan Maddox did. Uh, he says, what's up, guys? I'm a longtime gamer, first time squad upper. I am looking to have some chill people to play Avengers with on PS4 or Phasmophobia on PC. Uh, with the new trophy update, I've been antsy to get some more challenging plats, and I'm really digging Avengers Endgame. <laughs> I'm free out. After 4 p.m. Eastern on weekends and would like to grind out some of these challenges with some kind of funny best friends. I stream as well sometimes. Just a heads up. Thanks for the opportunity, Jordan. Uh, Mystic underscore Maddox on PS4. That's a M-A-D-D-O-X. Mystic underscore Maddox on PS4. And Maddox Bros 19 on PC. Check them out. Uh, you can go to kindofunny.com slash you're wrong to let us know what we get wrong as we screw it up. And we will set the record straight for you. So going through it right now, uh, a lot of stuff talking about ganders here, which is which is good. Uh, nanobiologist says Sneak King is not backwards compatible. That's upsetting. Um, Pizzazzle, great name, says Tim was saying Andrew Rayner's name wrong. Wait, yeah, I was saying Rayner. It's actually Reiner. So Andrew Reiner. There you go. Uh, I just call him Andrew. Uh, Nanobiology says bad. missed out today. Foregone is out today on Xbox One, PS4, and Switch. I was able to review it. It's a lot of fun. Go check out his review. And that's it. Cool. It's not bad. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good day, Janet. Pretty good day for Kevin, too. Got a got a couple stars. Right, Kev? How are you feeling about that? Pretty good. I'm also trying to see what 4K Blu-rays are available. Yeah, it's collect, a good day. Collect. Amazon Prime Day. Go check the, it out. For the Jurassic World 5 movie collection. That's not bad. Oh, I man. feel like now it's so much more valuable because of COVID. Like, you right? you have to, like, watch stuff at home. So you might as well have, like, a decent setup. Like, we're all getting suckered, like, $25 a pop from Disney for their, like, not that great movies. But you just want to feel something. <laughs> you know, like, if I give you the money, will I feel something? <laughs> like... That's how it works. That's how yeah. it works. Uh, for the rest of the week, the hosts are as follows. Tomorrow is Greg and Danny Pena. Thursday is Blessing and Sancho West. And Friday is Greg and Elaine Gomez. A whole bunch of great human beings. Very exciting stuff. Uh, Janet, we're about to do the post show. But before we do that, I want to say thank you for, for joining me today. This has been a very fun episode. Where can yeah, people find you? Me. What would you want them to know about you? Uh, so again, I am Janet. I am the Associate Guides Editor at IGN. So please uh, use our game help. Uh, I'm involved in a lot of that. I'm either writing it or my coworkers are or I'm monitoring freelancers who are doing that work. So please use us for game help. Uh, we like monitor that super closely. We take in feedback like we're, we we work on that really hard. That is our bread and butter. So please check that out. Uh, you can follow me everywhere on social media at Game Onesis. I also have a Twitch and a YouTube at that same handle. If you just go to my Twitter, uh, my all my stuff's pinned on my link tree that's on my pin tweet. And other than that, one thing I do want to shout out that I work on is I run a site called Game Industry Guides where I answer all your guys' questions about how to get in the game industry, how to pitch, what to do, like how to relax, how to work harder, what programs you need, like anything you ask me, like I will do a long form blog post on it. Um, there are probably about a dozen or more posts already on that. So please check that out if you have not already and hit me up with your questions. Every time I've come across one of those, whenever I see you tweeting about it, I always read them. And I that those are the things that made me fall in love with your Twitter because I just love that you oh, you don't do the normal like – if you just believe everything's going to happen, it's like, no, you like you get into the realities of your experience and how you think that might differ from others' experiences. And like, it, it's weird because it doesn't so much feel like advice as much as it's just like, here is your truth. Take from mm -hmm. it what you will. So anyways, go check it out. It's very, very cool stuff if you're at all interested in the industry. Uh, but now it's time for the post show. Supporters at the Silver Membership or above on patreon.com slash games get this. Janet, you've been fantastic. Thank you very much. Until next time, it's been our pleasure to serve you. Sherv. Sherv. <laughs>